you are all good, you know? So, uh, tonight, uh, the message is entitled, The Waters of Massa and Meribah. Ano? So, uh, last week, we spoke about the Lord have provided food for the people of Israel. If you would remember, um, uh, the Lord have provided manna, no? For the people of Israel. Um, during the entire time of the people in, of Israel in the wilderness journey, the Lord have provided for the people of Israel. He provided food. The Lord provided a water in the middle of the desert, you know, in, in the middle of the wilderness. And also the Lord provided victory for the people of Israel. That they won over uh, those people, the Amalekites, who want to invade over them. I know. So, tonight we will be speaking about the provision of the Lord. Um, on how the Lord have uh, provided, protected the people of Israel during their wilderness journey. You know? So, last week, uh, we saw how the Lord provided for food. Remember that? The Lord provided manna for the people of Israel. For the entire 40 years of their journey in the wilderness, the Lord provided manna every single morning. When they wake up in the morning, there you go. Manna is waiting right there outside of their door. And um, talagang never stop. Every morning, actually every morning except Saturday, no? Uh, because a Saturday is Sabbath, so there is no pouring of manna. But on Friday, double portion of manna that is being given uh, to the people of Israel. So for 40 years of their wilderness journey, there you go. Manna is being provided. And there was instance also that the Lord have provided meat for them. The Lord put out quail for the people of Israel to the point that the people got sick. No? Talagang because they overeat. I know. So tonight, we will be looking how the Lord provided water for the people of Israel in the wilderness. I know. So uh, Masa, in, in Masa, particularly in Masa and Meribah. Yung Masa and Meribah, actually, it's just one name. It's just one place. It just so happened that he has two names. Yung Masa means testing. Meribah means quarreling. This is the place where the Lord have tested the people of Israel. Massa and then Meribah. And when they were tested, instead of them uh, trusting in the Lord, just like what we sing earlier, teach us to trust in you. Instead of them trusting in the Lord, what they did is they quarrel. They quarrel, they murmur, they complain um, to Moses. You know? So let's pick up in uh, the book of Exodus chapter 17. Uh, 17 verse 1, it says here, The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They came to Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So, as you can see, it is the Lord who is uh, leading. It is the Lord who is commanding the people of Israel. During their entire journey, during their entire journey in the wilderness, it is the Lord who's leading them. Remember, the Lord is leading them through what? Through the pillar of cloud during daytime, at saka pillar of fire during nighttime. So, when they are traveling in the wilderness, there is this pillar of cloud right ahead of them. And when the pillar of cloud keep on moving, they will keep on traveling. And then to the direction where the cloud goes, they will just follow where the clouds. And at night time, that pillar of cloud turn into pillar of fire at night. Ano? And then once that pillar of cloud or pillar of fire stop, meaning to say they have to stop journeying. So they have to camp up, they have to put up their tent, parang ganyan. Ayan, they have to put up their tent once the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire is stopped. Ano? And then it says here in the verse that we have, so it is the Lord commanded. And then it says here, so they're traveling from place to place 
And then they camped at Repedim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The question is, why would they camp to Repedim if they know that there is no water in Repedim? Parang, it doesn't make sense to, to camp, you know? but for some reason, it is the Lord's commanding. For some reason, the cloud stopped right there. Meaning, if the cloud stop right there, they have to stop. They have to camp over there. But it doesn't make sense. Ano? So there's no water. Siguro they will say, Moses, hello, there's no water over here. We're going to die over here. And whenever they camp into a place, they don't know until when they will camp. Kasi they don't know until when the, when, when the cloud will lift it up. That's just the time that they will stop, uh, start uh journeying and they don't know it could be two days it could be one week it could be one year so if they will be staying there for a long time what will happen to them there's no water that is nearby siguro they will say Moses hello why would we have to come over here there's no water it doesn't make sense siguro we should have we should keep on moving forward and go to a place that there is no there's water for us to drink but you know as it says here, it is the Lord who's commanding over here. Remember, they are being um, commanded by the pillar of fire. Ano? Um, uh, the pillar of fire. But, you know, the reason why. So, why would the Lord want the people of Israel to camp in Repidim, wherein there is no water? Ano? So, have you ever been in a situation in our life? That sometimes, Lord, it seems like you are putting me in a place that doesn't make sense. Have you ever been in that situation? You think, Lord, parang it doesn't make sense that I am in this situation. There's no water over here. But you know, the Lord have put, the, uh, sometimes the Lord will put you into that position. Two things. To test your faith. If you will... Surrender your life to the Lord because Masa and Mariba means test and quarreling. They were tested, but instead of them uh, trusting in the Lord, they quarrel to God. So once we go through situation in our life, there is a test that is being given to us. And test sometimes is difficult. Test sometimes is uncomfortable. Diba pag nagtitest tayo sa exam tayo, we're not comfortable. It's just like, an bang answer nito? Sometimes the test would be tomorrow, the day before, nag-review ka na, you're thinking about it, what will happen to my test, especially kung board exam pa yan, or something like that. So it's not comfortable. Test. But, you know, uh, and then when they were tested, what would be the result for them? Would they gonna trust the Lord or would they quarrel? Number one, that's the reason why. Number two reason, the reason why the Lord have uh, brought them to Repidim when there's no water right there to show that the ability of the Lord to provide for the people of Israel. Out of nothing, the Lord will be able to provide water for them. To teach the people of Israel that the Lord is the God who will provide for them and the Lord is the God who will keep on providing for them. For that entire 40 years journey of them in the wilderness, it is God who's providing food for them, providing water for them, and providing provision for them, providing victory for them. Yan, talagang ipinuprovide ng Lord lahat yan uh, for the people of Israel. So, Exodus chapter 17 verse 2. So, when they were placed into that Repidim, no? Actually, they, they camped there for quite a while. According to the commentary when I was reading it, when they camped to Repidim, they still have a little bit amount of water. They still have reserved water. But over time of their stay in Repidim, naubos na yung tubig. And there is no place to replenish the, the water supply that they have, to refill the water jug that they have, and it gets empty already and there's no more water. So, what did the people of Israel do? As usual, they are known for this, ano, uh, for this action. Ano? 
ano, are, are we known of what kind? Ano? Are we known of quarreling people? Or are we known of oh, mapagpasensya yan? O oh, mapag, uh, mapagtimpi yan? O oh, yung ano, ang, ang description, oh, oh, wala pasensya yan. Ano? Talagang, ano, <laughs> talagang wala pakilam yan. Yung parang ganun ba siya? Ano? So the people of Israel, so obviously, you know what they did? They quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Give us water to drink, you know. And Moses, you know, through the entire journey of the people of Israel, within this uh, 40 years journey, talagang puro complain. Ang inabot ng si Moses, talagang, you know, puro complain. So, sabi niya dito, it says here, Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? And why do you put the Lord to test? Hindi ang Lord ang tinitest dito, kayo ang tinitest dito. Ano? And then, it says in verse 3, But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? You know, the question over here is not the ability of the Lord to provide water for the people of Israel. God can provide water even in the middle of the desert, even in the middle of nowhere. Ano? The question is, how would the people respond to the given situation? Kasi alam natin yung Lord is a provider God. We have studied that. The name of God is Jehovah Jireh. He is a provider. God, His name is provider. It's not just a provider. His name is provider. So, there's no question of the ability of the Lord to provide. The question is, how would you respond to a given situation when you are put into that situation and when you are being tested with your faith? Are you going to be like these people of Israel? Murmuring, complaining, grumbling. No? Or are we the kind of people, Lord, have your way, Lord. Lord, I know that you are a provider, God. I know even the situation seems doesn't make sense right now. I don't see the clear picture. I don't see your provision right now. But I know that you are a provider, God. That's all I know. I'm not seeing it right now, but I know you are, so let it be. You will, uh, you will have it. But obviously, the people of Israel is different. They're not like that. They are quarreling people. They are grumbling people. They are complaining people. Puro na lang complain. I know. And so it says here in verse 4, When Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do to these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Grabe, papatayin ako ng mga tao na to. Di ba? If you are Moses, you know, how, would you, how would you react you know, when your life is dedicated to serve the Lord, your life is dedicated to obey to the commandment of the Lord, even though how hard it is, but in return... Ano, parang people wanted to stone you, no? And, and it says here, the Lord answered to Moses, no? Go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff in which you struck the Nile and go. Ito, sabi niya ganun. So you go out in front of the people, so, ibig sabihin, when all the people are right there, they're, they're camp, right? Remember yung picture natin kanina? So, they're camp right there. So, you have to go where in everybody could see. Everybody will be able to see. So, you go up a little bit on the mountain next to the rock, sabi niya dito. Uh, and then, sabi niya dito, I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. So, you have to go there by the Horeb, and then I will stand there next to you and what you want i what i want you to do is you strike the rock hampasin mo yung rock beat the rock smack the rock you know talagang whip the rock struck the rock sabi na and the water will come out of it for the people to drink so moses did as the um, in the sight of the elders of israel and he called that place 
Massa and Meriba. Testing and yung complaining of the people. Ano? Because the Israelite quarreled because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? You know, have you, parang, why would they still question the Lord? Is the Lord among us or not? Wherein right before their very eyes, they could see the pillar of fire right there. It is uh, uh, an extraordinary phenomenon. It's, it's extraordinary things. And Moses is declaring already that is the presence of the Lord. You know, the pillar of fire signifies the power of God. The pillar of cloud signifies the protection of the Lord. The Lord is protecting them against the heat of the sun. Talagang meron silang shade. So the pillar of fire speaks of the protection of the Lord and the pillar of fire speaks about the power and the ability of God. And by them seeing that, by them seeing how the Red Sea parted, how they won the battle in Amalekites, because during this time they already won. Remember, Moses has to lift his hands like that every time his hands is lifted up. They're winning against the Amalekite every time he gets tired. The Amalekites are winning. And, and it's, it's, they see that one, that the Lord have provided victory for them. The Lord is with them. And remember the water in, Mar, in, in, in Mara, water bitter into sweet. They have experienced that one already. This is the second provision of water already for them. And then, and yet, and yet, they're still asking, is the Lord among us or not? Kasama ba natin ang Diyos? Wherein it's right before their very eyes already, they are seeing all these things, all the marvelous work of the Lord, di ba? Duh! <laughs> and then you still ask that one. Pero you know, sometimes we are like that also. When we are in a difficult situation, Lord, nasaan ka ba? Lord, talaga bang nandyan ka ba sa akin? No? Sometimes we could be like the Israelites. Where is God? We ask God in the midst of our trial. Pero sabi niya dito, So Moses, this is what you have to do. Go to that rock in Horeb. I want you to strike the rock. I want you to beat up that rock. Strike that rock. And I'm telling you, the water will come out from it. Abundant water will flow from that rock. Walang tubig na lumalabas sa bato. Only this one. Strike that rock and the water will come out. And when Moses did that, abundant flow of water flows through that rock, the rock in Horeb. Ano? And um, um, Maraming tubig. Tonight, tonight, I'm going to show you symbolism. What does it mean to strike the rock? And what does it mean, the water, to come out from that rock? All right. And who is that rock and what the water signifies? Ano? So, this is the picture of the rock in Horeb. Ano? According to them, uh, to the Ano, ano, ano sabi ni brother archaeologist? <laughs> uh, yeah, brother Dino. There is really water. There is a trace of water that flow from here. Merong mga minerals, mga something-something sila nakita. And then they saw like flow of water that really flew water over here. So this is in somewhere in Saudi Arabia. No? Kasi, listen to this. They came from Egypt. Here comes the Red Sea. After Red Sea, it is already the Median Desert. Median Desert is Saudi Arabia. So after come across the Red Sea, it is the Median already area, which is the Saudi Arabia. So this part, that is where uh, Mount Sinai is. So that is somewhere in Saudi Arabia. So they found this rock, and it was believed that this is the rock in Horeb that, that Moses have stri strike and the water will come out from it. And um, 
Uh, and we all know that water does not come out from rock. Walang tubig na lalabas din. Kahit tigapigain mo yan, walang lalabas na rock. So it is a miracle work of God. It is the miraculous work of God that there is nothing impossible to God. Amen? And if the, la- the Lord says so, the, it will happen. And not just that. It is not just the Lord is a miracle working God, but the Lord is giving us a blueprint. The, the Lord is giving us something that He will do for us in Jesus. Parang it's giving us a picture of the salvation work that He's going to do through Jesus Christ. So, with all of these things, the Lord is pointing us to Jesus. Jesus whom the Lord will strike. The Lord will, will punish in order for the living water to come out. Without Jesus Christ being stricken, without Jesus Christ being beaten up, there will be no flowing of water that will come out. So, alam nyo, one of the feasts that the people of Israel has is yung tinatawag nating Feast of the Tabernacle or the Feast of Boots. Uh, pista, ng, uh, pista ng Kubol. Yeah. So, the, the Feast of uh, the Tabernacle. Wherein, the Feast of the Tabernacle is they have to do it every year. Alright? For seven years, people of Israel, they would camp out. They will go out of their house and they will make a camp like this. So they will experience, it will show, it will tell them the significance of the Feast of the Tabernacle is to commemorate how the Lord have provided water in Massa and Meribah for the people of the Lord to, um, to survive. Kasi that was a miraculous work and because of that, let us celebrate that because it's the work of God. It is the provision of the Lord. It is a miraculous work of the Lord. So they commemorate that year after the year. For seven years, they go to that thing. Ano? And, um, and on the last day, pagalimbawang last day na the seventh day, there will be a ceremony that they will do wherein they will eat together. When, and, and there is like a celebration that they have to do. So, um, and, and one of the ceremony that they have is that the high priest, the high priest, no, will get water, a pitcher of water, and the pitcher of water that he will use is a golden pitcher that is just intended for, for the temple. Get water over there, and then go to the temple and then pour out that water into that altar. Signifying that the, the water, yun yung, yung sinisignify the, the water that the Lord have provided in Mesa and Meribah. And then, during the time of Jesus Christ, no? during the ministration of Jesus Christ, they were doing this Feast of Tabernacle. This Feast of the Tabernacle is happening at that moment. And on that seventh day of that Feast of the Tabernacle, there is a ceremony. Just like they get the picture and then pour out in the golden pitcher, water, pour in the altar. And Jesus Christ said this very interestingly in John chapter 7, verse 37, verse 39. On the last day and greatest day of that festival, that festival speaks about yung Feast of the Tabernacle. On that last day, on that last day, Jesus stood, so there is like a ceremony that's happening. Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, Rivers of living water will, from, will, will flow from within, within them. By this, he meant the spirit whom those who believe in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not given yet since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So he's saying over here, Jesus Christ, at that very end, sa 
at the very end of that feast of the tabernacle wherein they are commemorating that uh, the provision of the Lord wherein Moses have stricken that rock by Jesus Christ declaring this statement over here. He's saying that rock, that rock that was beaten up, it is me. And whoever, it is me because I will die, I will be crucified on the cross. And I'm stricken and because of that flow of living water and whoever believes in me, sabi niya dito, let anyone who is thirsty come to me because he is the God who is the supplier of that living water. He is the rock. Kaya Jesus Christ is named and called as the rock. Ano? So at that very moment, sabi niya, whoever believes in me, as the scripture have said, a rivers of living water will flow from dead. Ano? From them. So how did Moses do uh, for the water to come out? Strike the what? I strike the rock, na strike the stone. So just like Jesus Christ, as Moses have stricken that rock, Jesus Christ was stricken also for the water, uh, come out, you know. So obviously, he's saying over the reason why the Lord have brought the people of Israel to, to that place in Horeb to give us uh, an understanding or to tell us, foretell us what is going to do in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. The salvation that Jesus Christ will do for us. Ano? That he is the one who will be struck, he is the one who will die on the cross. Ano? And, uh, and what happened was, when Moses, remember Moses struck that rock and water came out, and you know what? And then everybody was satisfied. Everybody were, uh, the, the thirst were quenched. And then they went on the journey. They went on the journey. And then you know what? Remember, the people of Israel, they were like going around in the wilderness. 40 years later, almost 40 years later, they will be going back to the same place. This very same place, the Lord have let the people camp in that same place wherein they camp again there and then the people of Israel complain again that there is no water. It says here, in the book of Numbers chapter 20, verse 8, the Lord said to Moses, so they are in the same place again. Take the staff and you and your brother Aaron Gather and assemble together, speak to the rock. This time, that rock, I don't want you to strike that rock no more. Just speak to that rock. Speak to the rock. Before their eyes, and I will pour out water, you will bring water out of the rock for the community so they there and their livestock can drink. So after 40 years of journeying with the people of Israel who are grumbling, complaining, murmuring, siguro si Moses na puno na, no? You know, sometimes when you are angry, hangry, <laughs> hungry, no? Talagang, ano? Parang mabilis mag-init yung ulo mo, no? Especially, there's a lot of grumbling and complaining that you've been hearing, and and what Moses did, you know, he did, he he messed up, he messed up, he really made a big mess up, ano? Uh, sabi niya dito, the Lord said, I want you to talk to the rock, and the water will come out, you know. But because of the prostration, probably of Moses. Galit, galit siya sa mga tao dun, so what he did is strike the rock. He strike the rock. But you know, God was still gracious. He really still provided water. Abundant of water still came out. You know? He still blessed the people with water. There was a pour out of blessing. You know? But Moses, Moses, he messed up the most beautiful picture about Jesus Christ. 
Jesus needs to be stricken one time. That he died once and for all. But he messed up that one. That he, Jesus Christ, does not need to be stricken again in order for us to receive the grace, in order for us to receive this marvelous mercy of God. Only one time. And after that, all you have to do is just to speak. Make a proclamation only. Make a declaration only because Jesus have died already once and for all. And sabi dito, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, Christ died for sin once and for all. Jesus Christ does not need to, uh, uh, to be crucified over and over again. He does not need to be stricken over and over again one time. But Moses have messed up that wonderful picture of salvation about Jesus Christ. And because of that, Moses, Moses, he was not able to get into the promised land. Kaya hindi siya nakapunta sa promised land. Ano? Uh, what Jesus Christ have done 2,000 years ago on the cross is enough already. That Jesus Christ does not need to, uh, to die on the cross when Jesus Christ said, hang on the cross, he said, it is finished. That means it is finished already. You don't need to strike. You don't need, he does not need to die on the cross. But again, Moses had messed up that wonderful picture. And because of that, Moses, he did not make it through the promised land. You know? And during that time, Moses understood that he made a mistake. Moses understood that he was very wrong. That he messed up this great picture that the Lord is telling us. So what Moses did, he begged to God, Lord, please, please, Lord, I know I made a mistake, but please let me enter the promised land. Please, Lord, please. Nagmamakaawa siya. Nagmamakaawa siya. It says here in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 3, at that time, I pled with the Lord. Sabi ah, Lord, I'm pleading. Lord, please. 40 years ako nag-journey dito and I led the people of Israel. Please let me in. Please let me cross the Jordan because after Jordan River is already Jericho. That is already the promised land. That is the very first land that you will step promised land na yun after Jericho, ay, after Jordan River. So that is the promise. Lord, let me cross. Kahit isang step lang. But you know, to see the wonderful land on the other side, the beautiful hill country and the Lebanon mountains, <clears throat> but because of the you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. Dahil sa inyo. Parang, di ba? Parang, nakakaano naman yun. Dahil lang sa inyo, hindi ako nakapunta. You know? Kung hindi kayo nagkukulit-kulit na ganyan, sana nakarating ako. Because of you, sabi niya ganyan. I pleaded the Lord. Pero ano response sa akin ng Lord? That is enough. The Lord said, do not speak to me and speak to me. <laughs> Para lang magising. No? <laughs> do not speak to me anymore about this matter. Biruin mo yun. I don't want to hear about it no more, okay? Parang sabi ng Lord, parang tatay na nagsasabi, Lord, please, 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 will you stop? And I don't want you to talk about it no more. Period. If I say no, no. And because of that, you know, heartbroken si Moses. And sabi niya sa people of Israel, it's because of you, kung hindi kayo. You provoke me. You provoke me in anger. And because of that, he was not able to enter the promised land. But you know what? The, the picture that we want to give over here, the reason why the Lord have brought the people of Israel in that place, in Massa and Meribah, it seems like it doesn't make sense. But the Lord wants to give us a beautiful picture of what he's going to do 
in the future. Not just that, it brings us a message also that the Lord is the God who will provide even in the midst of nonsense. And also, another thing is that sometimes the Lord brings us to a place wherein it seems it doesn't make sense. It seems a provision of the Lord seems impossible, but that is a test of our faith. The Lord is just testing our faith. Are we giving our full trust to God or are we end up being like the people of Israel, complaining, grumbling, and murmuring? Praise God. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. Once again, O oh Lord, we want to thank you for this evening of uh, study and meditating your word. Thank you, O oh God, for the sweet spirit that uh, you have given us tonight. Thank you, O oh God, for your wonderful presence. Thank you, O oh God, for the richness of the wisdom of your word. Thank you, O oh God, for and filling us, fulfilling us, oh God, filling our, our spiritual nourishment, oh God, that we grow in faith, we grow in the knowledge of your word. As you have said in your word, faith comes from hearing and hearing of your words, oh God. How we love to hear your words, how we love to always be in your presence, oh God. So we want to give our full surrender to you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> glory to God. Uh, have a blessed week, everyone. I'll see you guys next week. God bless.